We are back to the chair that we are way too familiar with. Um, at least in this part, we're gonna be making something different because the base is now finished. So in this part, we are gonna be making this curved seat that your, that your butt sits on, <laughs> right? Um, which has some unique challenges. So like this one, you know, it was flat and it had bevels and all that. This one is uh, like one solid piece that has to curve, can't have any kinks or lumpy bits in it. Um, it has to look that. And then it's also got some really hard, uh, yeah, like a hard flat edge, obviously. So it's kind of like pressed plywood, I guess, like layers of plywood on top of each other. That's my guess, I don't know. Um, I think it's oak actually. So maybe it's got like a veneer on top of it as well. Ah. Anyways, doesn't matter. <laughs> At this point, it doesn't matter. So let's just, uh, let's start by adding in the object which it most resembles, um, which, let me just turn on my screencast tools. There we go. Uh, which just so happens to be a plane. Okay, and uh, since I don't wanna have to do everything twice, I'm gonna set up my mirror modifier. So someone, I saw someone in the comments saying like when they did the mirror for this this chair here, that it w didn't look like mine. Um, and that's because the mirror modifier will always work off of the origin point by default. So uh, if I move these vertices here to the right-hand side of this, and then I add in my mirror modifier, you can see that's exactly what it is doing. So it's working off the X axis. So that's the this red line going across here. That's the X axis. Um, I guess it would be confusing because you'd think it'd be going that way. But no, it's the X. It's, it's showing that this is the, the whatever, you get it. <laughs> Anyways, now that I've done that, um, I'm gonna turn on clipping so that this plane, uh, when I smash it in there, it doesn't go any further, but now these points here are locked and they don't move anywhere. And now we have a mirror set up, good, cool. So um, yeah, basically when, you, when you're, um, as we're adding in this object here, uh, we'll need to use the, the front side and, and top plane a lot. And we'll probably notice very quickly that things don't align as, as well as we had hoped. So for example, if I like move this out to here, I can see that this line is correct to there, but then as I go to the front, um, it's not quite aligned. And this, the side view, like your things, things will be off. So one thing to note is that these these planes that we added in here, remember that we just kind of dropped them in arbitrarily. So they will be slightly off. And this is something that you learn as you start modeling uh, an object. You get it as best as you can, you start modeling and then you tweak it until it fits. So we know that our chair leg is in the right place because it's the front and the side view, those are correct. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna move my top plane to be there because we haven't really used the top plane really. Um, and I'll move it also over slightly as well until it aligns there and there. And let me just turn the viewport down so that I can see it a little better. There we go. And there we go. Cool, so that should now be aligned there and there. Close enough. There we go, great. Cool, so I'm gonna be using Subsurf Modifier to smooth it out because uh, obviously these have a very rounded edge to it. So let's just add that in. Okay, um, now the thickness, by the way, if you're wondering like, oh, what about the thickness, all that kind of stuff. The thickness we're gonna do with a solidify modify, and we'll do that um, once we just get the general curvature and shape of this correct. Uh, right about there, okay, cool. So now that I've got the basic sort of blocking of it in place, now I'm gonna start adding in loop cuts to uh, to give it its definition. Um, or, well, I guess I should probably line this up maybe a little bit better. There to there, yeah, that's good, okay. So first loop cut. <clears throat> right down here, right down the middle, vertical, right there. And this is because we need more definition going across here, right? Um, and then right about there. And then this one, I know I need more definition on this edge here. So if I scale this in, you can see that I wouldn't really ever be able to get this to match it like as it is currently. So I'm gonna add in another loop cut right there. And I'll slide this one along with double, double tapping G, move that up. That one goes to there, to there. Good, 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 good. And then the other thing is, is I want some loop cuts uh, going this way, because you know, again, how a subsurf modifier works, it's gonna be averaging from there to there, all the way to there, right? Which is, which is way too far. So we want more control over this edge here so that it matches it. So another loop cut, but going horizontally, right? So move that up to somewhere there. And when you add in a loop cut, you'll notice that like the subsurf modifier like moves out and it, you know, so it's it's a constant like, you know, getting things right, adding in a loop cut. Um, and then you you go back and you change something because the loop cut, you know, changed the look of it, etc. So I'll do the same one here. Let's do a loop cut closer to that edge. Let's move that up to there. 
I might, well, hang on, hit the wrong thing. I might hide this leg here just so that I can focus on this without the uh, visual noise of, uh, of the chair getting in the way. Cool, so now, now that we've got the top view looking pretty good, we might as well now start to get the rest of it looking good. So this curvature here, you know, ignoring the thickness, let's just pretend that this is like a straight line going up here. So uh, yeah, I don't know why there is two lines there. Not specifically what, sure what that could be. It could be like a bevel. I assume that the blueprint was created uh, like just from the AutoCAD file, um, which means it'll be accurate, but I'm just not sure what some of these lines mean. But I'm just gonna assume that, that this middle line here isn't there and I'm just gonna go off of this. So let's move that down to there. All right, so that's that part, right? And then I'm just gonna move this up to be that part and so forth right there cool all right and then from the side view now we're actually going to start to give it its angle okay so rotating it as best as we can and doing the exact same thing over here um reading the lines uh, oh i guess that is the bevel yeah it would be the bevel there anyway i'll put it on the bottom line it doesn't have to be perfect but something like that and then let's just check that these back parts are aligned they are not so let's pull that up a little bit to about there. Okay, great. Cool, all right, so we got the basic shape of it now. Um, we might do a little bit of tweaking, but let's start to make it look like it does in the photo reference by giving it some thickness. So um, we've got a mirror modifier, we have a subsurf modifier, and it's done in that order. If they were the wrong way around, you would get that bubbling effect. Um, and now we're gonna add more modifiers. It's very important that they're in the right order. So after this subsurf, I'm gonna add in my solidify modify which is going to give it its thickness so by default it is uh it's putting the thickness in the wrong direction so i'm just going to change the offset to be one all right then in side view i wish i want to get the thickness as close as i can to the reference like that um yeah and that looks great so this is this is how we do it now you'll see um you'll see that as you move around right you get like this kind of like ribbed look like little ribs and then like along here. So you, you go, okay, well, we need smooth shading. So right click, shade smooth. And then you go, oh no, <laughs> right? Um, so the, the shade smooth, it will, uh, it's essentially, it's it's taking uh, lines, it, how does it work? So two faces like that, and it is blending it. There's a whole lot of like calculation shading math that goes into calculating all this stuff. But essentially it doesn't know the difference between um, one of these faint lines, right, that it should blend between, and this 90 degree angle. It's treating it as if that is a flat line, and so you're getting what looks like an artifact, but it's not really, it's just like it, just, it doesn't suit the model. So what we wanna do is we wanna force Blender to, uh, to recognize that when something is at a certain angle, it should not smooth it. It should kind of like break. It should be treated as like a hard a hard edge there. And the way you do that is you go down to your object data properties, and then underneath the normals section, there is a setting there called auto smooth. So if you turn that on, you can see that it has done this. Um, so it's essentially saying anything over 30 degrees, it will, um, it will not, try to smooth it out. It'll essentially break it. This is very similar to the edge split modifier. In fact, I believe they function in relatively the exact same way, um, but this is just like a checkbox. It's just right there. So I used to use edge split for everything and now I'm just like, I'll just use this, um, but yeah. So it's sharp. Yay, we got a sharp edge, um, but it's too sharp. <laughs> so sharp that you would cut your leg if you sat on it. So uh, now we wanna make it look not so sharp. So we wanna give it a bevel because um, this is something you might not know, but in the real world, there is no such thing as a pure 90 degree angle like that. Even like a sheet of paper that you cut your finger on, if you get microscopic, there's like a very, very like subtle, uh, there's an edge to everything, right? So, um, and you can see that in the reference. You might not think that there is one, but you zoom right in there and you can see like, oh yeah, the light's catching like the edge of something there. So, um, yeah, which is a good thing because yeah, otherwise you would cut your leg every time you sat on it. Uh, so bevel modifier right underneath this one. Okay, and um, for some of you watching this, uh, you will have noticed that when you add a bevel modifier that it looks like what we had before when it wasn't sharp. Um, and I'm not sure why, like it happened to me once and I couldn't reproduce it 
which is always a fun thing when you find something and then you're like, wait, what was that? And then you do it again and it's like, you can't reproduce it. So I recorded this three times and I ran into a different problem each time. But anyways, if you did happen to find that the edge here was becoming smooth, um, what you can do is uh, select just the outside edge for your model, then hit Control E and then select Mark Sharp. And that kind of forces like this auto smooth thing, this angle here, whatever, like, it's tell like it's kind of forcing it regardless of the angle um, to to make it sharp because the bevel can I guess sometimes throw it off. Um, anyway, it did once. <laughs> Anyways, so I've got the bevel here and now I can change this by whatever amount that I set this thing here to. So I only want it to be a very, very subtle bevel. So let's set this to something like that. Now, keep in mind the camera is gonna be like this far away. If you wanted to, and you wanted to be really realistic, you could like add in more segments here. Um, so you can see what it's doing there. It's, uh, it's smoothing out that edge there. And you can actually see that as I increase the segments there, it did actually kind of do that funny thing to my edge, um, which is odd because I did actually just mark it as a scene. Maybe I click mark sharp. All right, well, mark sharp sometimes work because it didn't work the last time I tried it. But anyways, uh, a few things you can try. I'm, I guess it's pretty clear I'm not exactly sure why sometimes it would go smooth and other times it wouldn't and yeah, but anyways. Um, I, I, if you increase the segments, you are gonna be increasing the render times ever so slightly, depending on your hardware, because it's more vertices to render, but I think two segments uh, should be fine. Um, and let's make sure that's set to smooth. Right, okay, so the problem <laughs> that we have here is this looks like it's not set to smooth, but you can see we are set to shade smooth. Um, and you can even see the same problem across here. You've got like little ribs appearing. So what happened? Well, it was the bevel that we added. Um, it's currently default. It's not distinguishing between any type of, so anytime there's two faces, it's putting a bevel there, even when they are like right next to each other, right? Um, so what you wanna do is you want to limit it by angle. So limit method angle. And I usually set this angle to 60, but you know, anything, it's this angle, essentially anything over that amount, it will bevel. So 60 plus, including of course 90 degrees, which is what this is, it's gonna bevel. But for something that is like relatively flat and almost like that, of course, it's not going to bevel. So generally any any bevel, I always put a, a limiter on it because otherwise you just get like nothing is ever then like shade smooth because it's beveling everything and it's, it's adding in angles and things. So anyways. The modifier stack is uh, the order in which things are stacked is incredibly important because you can see that if I was to put the solidify modifier above the subsurf modifier, you get a completely different effect because it is, uh, it's doing the, 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 the mirroring, then it's doing the solidify and it's giving it the thickness and then the solidify modifier after that is then taking that thickness and then it's smoothing the whole thing out, you know, averaging out the three vertices. So, uh, so it's very important that you get the order right. You wanna do the, you know, start with a plane, then smooth out that plane, then do the thickness, and then do the bevel after that. If any of these are out of whack, um, you'll get completely different wrong uh, results. Anyways, that looks pretty good. So let's bring back our um, leg, whatever, Alt, Alt H to bring that back. And uh, let's just correct it. Any slight problems that are off, because there are gonna be problems. <laughs> There's always gonna be something that's slightly off. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, check this view, that's pretty good. It's like checking off a box, like check this view, yep, check this view, yep. Um, and you just have to do that. That's modeling from a blueprint. And you should do it because it's like one of the, I guess the problems of like human perception is like, you get like tunnel vision, you're looking at just one angle and you're like, yeah, this is great. Like if you ever have that, like you're, you're modeling something and you're you're like, moving things along a certain scale and you go, great, it's perfect. And then you move out and you rotate around and you moved it along a completely wrong axis and it's all screwed up. So anyway, I'm waffling. So I mentioned we were going to uh, mirror this leg um, and it pl this part here plays a role in that. So yeah, we've got one mirror modifier which is working up here and that's just you know mirroring this on both sides of it. So we can add a second mirror modifier. 
um, down here. And it doesn't matter where this, this second mirror modifier actually appears, like it can go before or after subdivision, because it's actually gonna be two separate objects. But on this new one here, I'm going to uh, click this eyedropper tool, and now I'm gonna select the plane. So what this is telling it to do is instead of its default state of using the origin as the mirror point, you're telling it to use the origin of this object which is right here. So if I was to move this object, you can see that it's now uh, moving that mirrored object. So um, yeah, it's just really handy because you don't have to worry about like repositioning things or whatever. If you get something right in the center there, you just use that as the mirror point and uh, it's great. And if you don't have a, a, an object to mirror on, you can just add in uh, an empty and base it off of that. That's another way. Cool. All right, well, we are done for this part, but guess what? You, you have some homework. Um, so what I want you to do is to do, just like you did here, I want you to make this back seat, okay? Uh, and this is important, right? To I don't wanna have to show you everything because of course when you go and model something yourself, you're not gonna have me there telling you what to do. So it's good to test whether or not you've understood something. Now in the next part, I'm going to assume you have modeled it and I'm gonna show you some common mistakes or how to resolve certain problems that you might have run into. But it's important that you actually try to do it now because uh, um, you'll learn a lot more. Trust me. If you uh, if you if you do things in the right order, if you listen to me, you will. Uh, it'll it'll solidify in your brain a, a lot faster. And that's the cue. My daughter crying to end this video. So go ahead, click here, and I'll see you in the next part.